I'm going to call the committee of oh committee of the whole. I am sorry. I am going to call the license hearing and public safety committee um, to order. Date is March first, twenty twenty three. Roll call. Alderperson Feldy, I am present. Alderperson Ackley is excused. Alderperson Decker here. Alderperson Heideman here. And Alderperson Salazar, I have not heard from you. She so. said she, last time she yeah. would not be here. Okay, so she is excused. Excuse. Thanks for reminding me. Um, Pledge of Allegiance. I'm going to try to stand for this one. Nope. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, approval of the minutes from October 17th. So moved. 2022. I have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. All right, I think this is this is the oh, wrong job. I can. Yeah. Wait a minute. I'm going to use Okay. Um, so the minutes were February. 5th. February 15th, yeah. 2023. Okay. Want to vote on that again? No? Okay. The minutes have been approved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, items for discussion and possible action 2022 annual report from the police department discussion only. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for giving us time to review our annual report with you today. Um, you should ha all have the report is posted. And so I'll just go over the highlights and try to answer any questions that you might have. Um, so I'd start out with where in many cities across the country, crime is increasing. Part one crimes for the year were essentially flat. We had 852 part one crimes in 2022 um, versus 841 uh, the year before 2021. Um, this includes a 4% decrease in violent crime and a 3% increase in property crime. It also represents, as you'll see on page 43, a 14% decrease over the five-year comparison of 852 versus 991 and a 50% decrease over the 10-year period from 2012 to 2022. So 2022, as I've said, we had 852 part one crimes and in 2012, we had 1,609. Um, there were uh, 1,418 traffic accidents in 2022. Uh, this marks the third year in a row that we've been below 1,500, and that's our goal. Um, so even with all of the distracted and aggressive driving that's gone on, um, we've had some good progress on trying to keep accidents down. 2022 officers received over 7,000 hours of training. It's about 88 hours for each officer, and this includes 32 hours of in-service training and other specialized training. Uh, during the year, we recovered 22 and a half kilos of methamphetamine, 1.5 kilos of cocaine, and 5.5 kilos of fentanyl. We onboarded seven new police officers, three CSOs, and four professional staff. Um, hiring and retention will continue to be an issue in the coming year, and I, um, believe that we'll hire about 10 police officers um, this year and probably um, at least one professional staff. During 2022, we um, put seven new vehicles into service, into, including two hybrid vehicles. We remediated the firearms range, replaced the carpet and painted the courtroom, replaced the carpeting and painted the shift commander's office, put some new furniture in there. Um, and reorganize it to, to make it work better for our, our um, mid-level management and shift commanders since uh, they're in there all day, every day. Um, we also replaced the chairs and audiovisual equipment in the roll call room and DPW resurfaced the parking lot and installed more efficient lighting in the hallways. Um, for community outreach, we held our 26th Citizens Academy Junior Police Academy, we assisted with Safety Town, we ran a cadet program, 
worked with um, Baco to organize a unity walk and community barbecue, ran a cops and bobbers event, and took part in dozens of neighborhood events. And so if you go to the community outreach part of it, you'll see that there's literally hundreds of events that we participated in in the community. And then that we also actively participated in drug treatment court and advocated for funding to support a co-responder program that should begin this this year. So those are the highlights that I have for you. If you have any particular questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. I have one. Where does all the drug stuff go that you pick up? Do you send it to the state or um, do you dispose of it? Does so it we maintain it as, as evidence until it's no longer needed. And then once it's no longer needed, it essentially gets burned up. No resale value on that. Good thinking. No, thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you, Chair. On, on, on the 10 new hires in this next year, is that a combination of people that are going to add to the force, or does that include retirees? It within that 10? It's so all re retirees and resignations. Okay. So then, and so then your staffing will still be at 95%, 100%? Up and down is where it will be. Right. So right now we have, I have to think, we probably have three or four vacancies. We have three people that we've hired that are in the academy. Okay. Then we have, I think three vacancies. We'll have another vacancy on March 3rd when John Rupnick retires. Um, so we have conditional offers out to most of those people. Um, and we have uh, an event scheduled tentatively now for March 20th where we're gonna promote some people and swear in some new officers. In, the, in that field, is there a lot of uh, crossing over from one community to another community? Or are, are you looking at all brand new recruits? Most of ours are brand new. Okay. We'll get a couple that that are laterals from someplace else, but not too many. But that's not that's not commonplace for someone. To I think it's about. becoming more common. I'm not a huge fan of it. There's some people that I would like to hire, but most of the time when people are leaving someplace, oh okay, there's some baggage that goes with it most of the time. So Do not, you advertise not, anywhere for hiring? Yep. We recruit and advertise all over the place. Yep. And we Great. do a continuous recruitment. So we're taking applications right now. <clears throat> so we're so, so where is that like the, the academy? Where do they where do they go then for that for that, that academy training and things like that? Most of ours go to Fox Valley, but it really it depends on what's available and where where they live when it happens. Okay. Yeah, how long is that academy training usually? Uh, it's 720 hours. Okay. So it's about four months. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. Uh, so, and uh, I have a, my my wife's grandson has a friend that's in the in the process of becoming a policeman or whatever, but he's at Oshkosh. So the university he, he goes to the University of Oshkosh. Is that also connected with since Fox Valley, or is that it's one's not. a tech school and one's not? Right. Okay. He, once he graduates from his four-year degree right he'll have to go to an academy so he, he'll either have to sponsor himself or if he gets hired someplace uh, they might sponsor him so of the i gotta think so that we have three people in the academy right now that we're sponsoring we have a conditional offer out for one person that's accepted it that will that will be hiring that's putting himself through the academy hmm. um at like northwest tech i think he's at we have another one that, that we're hoping to give a conditional offer to very soon. That is same thing. Actually went to Oshkosh, uh, played football there, graduated and started on his master's degree because he got that extra COVID year. Yeah. Um, and so now he's putting himself through Northeast Tech in Green Bay. Um, so some we're gonna some are gonna sponsor themselves. Most of them now try to get sponsored by somebody just because um, the academy at one point was 400 hours and it was 520 and then when i was uh, chairman of the board we changed it to 720 hours so it's it's longer so it's more expensive for them to put themselves through it well this young man he, he does a lot of work in oshkosh at the same at the same time they always have a program where he can go to school he can also work 
and uh, he seems to enjoy it. So, so is there? A, do you usually offer like a little bit more than for someone that's been through the academy that are? Already before? We we have in our contract we've negoti negotiated a, uh, an academy rate. So somebody that's going through the academy, we pay them seventy percent of their salary. Okay. Any other question? Nope. Okay, that was discussion only. So we're going to move on to um, 2020, number seven, 2022 annual report to the Oregon Fire Department. Dodgers, Chief. Thank you, Chair. Uh, hold all questions to the end, please. Uh, <laughs> no, so thank you. As Chief said, we really appreciate you giving us the time to talk about our annual report. And uh, this is a quick, quick synopsis. Uh, everybody should have a copy of that. But uh, some of the highlights uh, that we received our grant in uh, our flex, EMS Flex grant. Uh, grant. So um, that is basically about uh, 120,000. Um, you have to spend half of it first before they'll give you the other half. So obviously that's an ongoing kind of thing uh, just because of supply issues it carried over to this year. Um, we also received our AFG grant for the purchase, and that's what that picture is there, is uh, what we consider Lucas devices. They're compression devices, so uh, they will do CPR compressions while our medics are administering medications or, or as you see in the picture, uh, air, doing some oxygen stuff. So we're happy about that. Uh, we had our second annual Citizens Fire Academy with 15 graduates, uh, so that was another success, so we enjoyed that. Place a new order for an ambulance. Uh, the vendors, uh, much like the suppression vendors, they're about two years out for ambulances. So um, we are, uh, as you are aware of, uh, replacing our fleet. Uh, it's over 18 years old, so we need to start replacing them. And uh, for sure, they shouldn't be that old. <laughs> but unfortunately, just due to the times, uh, they got to be a little older than we'd like. Uh, we also worked with some vendors on a board up uh, procedure, uh, which would uh, bring in after a fire. Uh, company to help board up and secure the property. So for a business owner or homeowner, so we're proud of that. A few other highlights: we institute a chaplain program. Uh, you know, very similar to what the police have, uh, all just at a smaller scale right now. So that is a picture of Father Leo. Uh, so he's been coming around, meeting the, the members, and and there if if anybody in the uh, department or the city needs a year. Uh, placed our new engine, and that's the picture we're very proud of, a new paint scheme. Uh, so uh, we appreciate all the support and uh, the, the ability to replace it. So we're very happy with uh, how it turned out. And then obviously our ongoing discussions with Station 3 and the remodel. Something that doesn't happen too often, we uh, did a live burn uh, working with the, our neighboring communities, which is Kohler, Town of Sheboygan, and Town of Wilson. So uh, just, uh, it, we don't get houses too often. So it's just simulating actual things that we would do uh, at a fire scene. So that worked out nice. Uh, we also, uh, as you are aware, joined the Wisconsin Task Force. So uh, our three members, uh, AC Salzman, Lieutenant uh, Lois and Captain Miller should be done uh, by April with all their certification training and all that. So now they'll be deployable. So that's a nationwide or statewide deployment. Uh, and then we also worked uh, and bought uh, several replacement uh, equipment for our technical rescue team uh, for our department. So that's all part of the task force kind of thing too. So worked out well. Had several promotions like PD did. Uh, we had, uh, uh, as you can see there's um, in 2022, uh, the positions, a lot of turnover uh, just due to the recent retirements. We uh, here's some of the retirements that we lost, and you'll see the years on there. So again, we're becoming a very young department. Uh, so uh, it will present its own set of challenges, but also it's very exciting because you get new blood in there that's uh, you know wanting to learn and train. And then we hired uh, three new members that joined our team last year. So uh, and as BD, that'll continue throughout this year as well. Our call volume was our busiest year on record, uh, 6,800, a little over 6,800 so uh, uh, calls. Uh, out of that, the unique stat, and we did talk about this in our quarter of the report, but uh, 44,380, remember I gave you just a percentage, which I, I, I recall was 64%. So really you don't equate that to a number until you see this, 
So 4,380 of those calls out of the 6,000 were overlapping. That's a lot. That is a lot. So, um, and again, we talked about it. You guys asked questions, so we, we talked about that. But this is just a breakdown of our incidents. So uh, 92 fires, uh, what we can consider fires. So there's a live flame and all that. Uh, the rescue EMS, were, so this is our, our EMS calls, and then our non-fire is everything else. So that equals our 6,800 and change. Uh, out of those EMS calls, our most common uh, advanced life procedures were our cardiac monitor. So that's obviously looking at the heart rate, you know, putting the monitor, the little pads on your, your chest. And then uh, our IV starts. So over 2,600 IVs were started. Uh, we bought some new fire prevention program uh, equipment. So we go out to teach our schools every year. Um, and that house, that picture on the left is our hazard house. So you can actually, it simulates smoke and fire and, and you can see, you know, different aspects of, of what an average home might look like. Um, and then uh, 3,122 students was the total number from last year. And as I mentioned, our annual uh, fire academy, that uh, so our second one, uh, was a success. So uh, again, they learn all aspects of what we do in the fire service, extrication, uh, advancing hose, searching in a smoke environment, EMS procedures, all that kind of stuff. So uh, very, very successful. We're proud of that. As far as the Fire Prevention Bureau, 2,700 and change of inspections. So that's that's a lot and we're continuing to get busier as more businesses come in and our program becomes uh, continues to be aggressive and we fine tune how it used to be done in the past where we're hitting the businesses like we should be. So uh, we're very proud of that. 21% uh, increase from 21, uh, 2021, which again is, it, it's still continuing. We expect it to continue again next year. Uh, some of just to wrap it up here, just a few of our uh, incidents that we had from last year. Uh, we had that dive incident on Memorial Day last year. Uh, uh, several fires. So this one was in October. And then we had that string of that week about when we had around five fires in, in the city, which was kind of uh, unique. You don't get that too often in one day uh, or a one week period. Sorry. So just uh, those are some of the pictures. And then uh, that's it. So I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, when, when you when you, when you increase the um, the number of inspections, does that does that uh, does that business owner get a break on his insurance, or is there something that that they say, okay, it's a, your this, your department is doing such a great job, uh, we know they're inspecting, they went through your building, is there any is there any monetary value? Typically, no, not for a business owner. Where you get that is where it's related to the ISO uh, um, classification. So we are a city, we're classified ISO class two. Uh, one is the best. Uh, we are trying to work on that. So that involves a lot of like your water supply, your telecommunication, your staffing, your responses, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then that affects the premiums for the business owners and, and homeowners, but more for the businesses because they're larger. By us doing inspections, it doesn't decrease the um, insurance rate how, uh, premiums, but it does obviously make your building safer mm -hmm. and hopefully in, in the long run, less likely to burn, which is the end result. So. Of the, of the uh, non-fire calls, non-fire, non-EMS calls, are those mostly mostly like vehicle accidents or what's, what's your majority of those kind of calls? Yeah, so the non-EMS ones, depending on if there is a patient involved, so that would be uh, a patient. We don't we don't double double bill, if you will. We don't mark it as an EMS and a non-fire. So okay. if, if it was an accident, it would be uh, an EMS if we transported. If there was no injuries, then yes, that would be a non non-fire. Uh, those are typically uh, what we consider fire alarms. Okay. So the fires are actually those 92 were actually where there was flames. Okay. Uh, so, whether it was a, a candle that lit a uh, curtain on fire, a garbage can, kitchen fire, or an actual full blown house fire. The rest are all are missing. You know, you're going into the sewers to get the, the ducklings, you know, 
all those anything that we do that's not a child anything. pulled a fire alarm at a school or something like that that's, <laughs> not, that's a non-fire <laughs> even though it's a fire response it's not a fire fire yeah it's a pick and save <laughs> that that is uh yummy for the cheat <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, that was discussion only, so moving on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Chief. Um, we have attorney's office. That's also discussion only. Yep, so I provided you a report. I can answer any questions if you want, but you had the opportunity to read it. So I'm looking at it now. This is really helpful to know, you know, how many how many cases you've had to take to municipal court. And, you know, uh, I think this is, is good to see. We anticipate there may be some new metrics we'll be able to do in the future. Uh, the software we're in the midst of working on will give us some of that. Probably won't be 23 numbers yet since we're into 23 and we haven't got it all running yet, but maybe by 24, there might be a few other numbers that are we'll be able to add to the report. But this is the, the basics, sort of the things that take us a lot of time. Seventeen cases against the city this year or last year. Yeah. It's lawsuits, right? Yeah. That's they can range from yeah, everything from I fell in a pothole and brained my ankle. Yeah, I mean, if they get if it gets to that, um, mm -hmm. a lot of those were able to prevent at the claim stage. But occasionally, people do file those. It can be, you know, and, and things that have settled recently or that we've been dealing with recently. You know, include things having to do with resources. They include things having to do with. Um, just recently got d dismissed the, uh, the suit against the police and fire commission from Mr. Gillette. Uh, so, you know, those kinds of things all, all count in that 17. Sign, there was a signed case last year that took quite a bit of time that we finally were able to settle. Yes, I've noticed the council documents process, you know, has gone up. Um, well, uh, it's it's pretty down. steady. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> steady. I I would say, I would anticipate that 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 number, you know, it might go up or down a little bit each year, but uh, you know, it, it's not like we're anticipating suddenly it's going to be four hundred. Yeah. What are the the the, the bankruptcies like? Um, is that the, the like tax defaults or is that? They're they're typically they're. You know, it can be any number of things, but sometimes it's if they owe us, it's not so much taxes, uh, at least real property taxes, because that's really handled at the county level once once no. we process it through. Uh, but personal property, it could be included in that. A lot of times the people who declare bankruptcy are people who either owe us money because we perhaps got a loan out, uh, you know, some of the some of the loans that the development department uh, we'll do uh, okay. some of those programs, or it could be people who owe fines, uh, forfeitures at, at the court, uh, th those kinds of things too. Um, yeah, and you know, this and year there were down. a lot fewer of those. Yeah, and we have, we're looking in the past, we have 12, 12, 9, yeah. and, you know, and all of a sudden there's two, which are I think good. The economy <laughs> is, is play, plays yeah. a big role in that. Okay. I think the one other thing that maybe has played a role. Maybe it's more a feeling than it is that I have any proof for it. But you know, we'd been we'd been sort of complaining for years about all the personal property taxes that was just sitting out there uncollected, and and Kate okay. and her department have really attacked that. So okay. um, that's I think that's helped as well. Okay. I'm glad that they're doing that. Okay. All right. Any other questions? That was discussion only, so we're going to move on to number nine. Um, RO number 110-2223-2023 by City Clerk submitting various license applications. 
We're recommending granting all the applications on this RO. Uh, I make a motion to uh, grant the applications on the RO. Second. Um, any, any discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 An opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Okay. Next meeting will be March 15th, 2023. And we need a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. And we're adjourned. Thank you.